Dickens, let's stick to it. Let's get into the memorial section of the shows that we are saying goodbye to this month. Now, last month I talked about how it was in the fall, right before an election um, season. So you get all of these shows that are politically bound and commentary like that. So a lot of those shows ended. So we're not going to spend too much time really talking about that. The circus is on a break, which as geeky and as politically nerdy as it sounds, it is genuinely one of my favorite shows of the week. It is just so well made documentary style. Last week tonight is on break. Real Time with Bill Maher is on break. Real Time with Bill Maher, oh, I have been disagreeing with him so much recently. He's really on this, like, trying to connect with the right wing. And I'm an independent to the fullest extent, so I don't care about what the Democrats or what uh, the Republicans are saying, right? Like, in terms of staying by your side, staying by your team, whatever. That's the issue. But what he's doing is, like, hitting all of these just talking points that are television talking points that don't deal with the actual world, and it's a little bit obnoxious. But let's get into a show that ended this month, this past month, called The Foundation. We talked about The Foundation on last episode at least, if not the episode before that as well. It was a show that I was really excited to start. You know, it was based off of Asimov's novels, which range such a wide variety of things. And on a week-to-week basis, though it might have been telling like a pretty complex story that bounced around time, I really enjoyed it. Um, The issue with that This is not the only time that this is going to come up in this episode. The issue with that is that if you don't, no matter how much I enjoyed it, if you don't leave me satisfied at the end, I'm not going to have a good thought of the show, right? Like, that's what happened with Game of Thrones. We're so invested. And even if the ending wasn't terrible or wasn't the worst thing in the world, because it didn't satisfy us, didn't satisfy us. It left us wanting more. It left us feeling unsatisfied. And sadly, that is what the foundation did for me. Um, right? Like, so... I don't like when a show just keeps revealing itself as it happens. Not storyline-wise, but like the physics and the reality of and the lore of the show. Right? Like, I think one of the things that's most important about a show is that you, in the first few episodes, you explain what the boundaries are. You explain what the leverages are. Right? Like, if you're a show that's about superheroes, like, you explain, okay, people have powers. Then you have to tell us what goes around. Okay, do people, are powers normal in this world? Does everybody understand what powers are? No. Okay. This powers are hidden here. Or, yes, people like this have powers, right? Like, you have to explain what the boundaries of the show are. And I felt like the Foundation did that very well. Until we start getting to the last episode and things just start happening. And you're going, I didn't know that was even possible in this show. And it's not enjoyable because... I understand it's now possible. I'm just going like, what the hell? Oh, cool. If that was an option, if I knew that was an option or if I felt that was an option or if it was a sensible and a logical option, then I would have been thinking that this whole time. Oh, in that case, like, yes, it's obvious. But it doesn't feel good at the end. And that's the sad part. Like... And maybe it's the fact that some characters are lying to each other on the show. So as a viewer, I'm supposed to also feel lied to. But it's not that I feel lied to. It's not that I feel betrayed. It's not that I feel deceived. I feel like you didn't do your job right. And maybe that's the issue with trying to adapt the Asimov novels. Maybe it's too big of a story to grasp into 10 episodes. 
but I feel like they were very much telling a wide spanning story in the first and the beginning of the season and then the last maybe three or four episodes just take place on a one to two day span and maybe that's not how you had to tell the story ultimately um, the storyline that became the main storyline the terminus storyline was corny and because it ended corny it made all of the things that led up to it that felt a little bit corny while it was happening but I was okay with it just because I was seeing where it was going it made all of those things feel corny so now episodes I enjoyed I go back and I'm going yeah but that corniness shit that happened was leading me up to the next corny thing the thing that I will say was really enjoyable and which really took me by surprise the most oddest the most bizarre the most the story that was probably the hardest to grasp, the Empire story, became the most interesting part about it. And it went on, it dived into human consciousness and faith and, and what it means to be alive and what it means to be real and what does it mean if, and, 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 and can you be defective? It asked all of these questions and it started so surface level and it started with characters that seemed so obviously villainous and it seemed so obvious that their purpose in the story was to be a villain and to cause conflict and somewhere and in a, in a, in a very big way that story changed And it really turned into a inner consciousness, reflective, narrative plot. You see how like quiet and how still I got for a second? That's because genuinely those are the questions. Um that it brings on to you. There's also an issue in the show where like, as I mentioned, the last few episodes happen in like a, a day or a two span, but other things that are a century and a half long take place in 45 seconds. So I'm going, wait a minute, we spent two episodes on in a, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a 24 to 48 hour span. And then you're gonna, and in five minutes, you're gonna take me 160 years into the future. And then I'm just supposed to be there with you, with these characters that I just was with you 160 years. It holds no weight and it gives no depth to anything that happens in the show. And ultimately, it was disappointing. Obviously, if there's a season two, I'm gonna watch it. And I don't know why I say obviously because with the way that I'm describing it doesn't seem like it would be a show that I would watch again. But I enjoyed it. I was just highly disappointed at the end of it. Damn. I don't want this episode to feel like I'm shitting on shows because I'm realizing that the next show I am going to say goodbye to is another show that I'm probably not going to have... I, well, I'm probably not. I am not going to have the highest um, ratings for. I'm not going to have the most positive reaction and recap to. But it's another story that I did enjoy. Um, and actually holds a very close spot to this black hole heart of mine. But ultimately, I think, was a failure. And it's not in every sense of the word, because let's get to where it was successful. I'm talking about Cowboy Bebop. So Cowboy Bebop was successful because Netflix recreated an anime that looked, had characters that 
kind of resembled the original and had a set dressing that very closely resembled the original piece of work. That seems like a low bar. And this Hollywood film remake, and it's just dawned on me that I didn't see Ghostbusters, and I didn't even realize that. That should be included in this episode. And this Hollywood remake of a world, that low bar does not get hit very often, so that is a success. The issue with Cowboy Bebop is that if you have ever watched the original, if you have ever felt connected, if you've ever connected with the original, then this new Netflix show completely missed the tone of that. It's almost as if if they got rid of all of those things that I call successful and they were able to just take two of the characters from the anime and recreate them what they really felt like in a dark room with nothing else but a white table if they were actually able to capture the tone and the spirit and the true impact of each episode it might be more important than getting a, 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 a spaceship that actually looks like the spaceship from the show or villains that look identical to the villains from the show now Cowboy Bebop premiered in like 1998 I think so think about what that means to me I'm, thir I'm a 30 year old man with Digimon tattoos and yes we live in 2021 now where you're not a cool kid under the age of 16 if you're not into anime but it wasn't like that when I was growing up the Dragon Ball Z kid was a kid was a very specific type of kid now that's every kid and you know kudos to the world for evolving and changing but that wasn't every kid so me me, me wasn't an anime person. So I was never really an, an anime person. That was not my thing. Digimon was something that always touched to me. It was like, you know, it's not so much anime. It's more just Japanese um, cartoon, you know, adventure. Cowboy Bebop was also something that touched me. As a six-year-old, There, I could say that and maybe Devil Man were the only other two real animes that I was into. And so what else is going on that year? You have uh, uh, the Silver Surfer cartoon is also 1998. Uh, another movie that I absolutely love that hopefully I watch very soon and we get to talk about this on one of the episodes of Xenon, Girl of the 21st Century. This Disney ch ch Channel original movie that Touch my heart. Kirsten Storm is was on a soap opera that my mom was grandmother was watching the other day and was like, "Wow, you're seeing on. You still act cool." So the story, the visuals, had such a strong impact on my childhood, my growing up that those are the reference points of what I think is cool today. Like that's what I think is awesome. That space futuristic cyberpunk you saw manic music media number four that's what i'm like that's what i like but the beautiful thing about cowboy bebop is the apathy of the characters all of this is going around them and they are liars they keep things to themselves they can barely pull themselves to wake up in the morning because they, of the past and because of the way that they are connected to the things that have happened to them. In this futuristic world where anything can happen, but it is also so mundane. That they are out going on these dangerous, everyday 
life risking missions and it means nothing to them. And Netflix did not capture and probably could never capture that because that is not an enjoyable show, right? When like you have to make me fall in love with the characters. When you have to make these characters good people with good backgrounds, with intention and with motivation. The beautiful thing about Cowboy Bebop was that it didn't need any of that. It was just a show, an everyday cowboy western type of vibe of people living in the world that is too harsh for them to be able to handle. Yet the only reason that they are still getting by is because there are other people that are also living in a world just as harsh trying to handle it. And Netflix failed on that. And Cho, who is, I think, a great actor and is great and is charming and could definitely be a movie star, like a leading movie film star in a action movie star. And that's what he should be doing. He was not the right fit for this, for Spike. Like, he just... He made Spike a very likable character. Oh, he's quimsy. He's cute. It was very 70s, you know, Tarantino. But that is not what makes Spike interesting. So, you know, I've heard people say, like, this show's good. Like, this show is very good. If you have never seen Cowboy Bebop, awesome. I'd be like, hey, watch it. If you are just looking for a space-like cow, uh, a space-like cool show on Netflix, go ahead and watch Cowboy Bebop. But if you want a show that has true depth of emotion and a place where you don't expect it, like, oh, to dive back into it. The thing about, like, Cowboy Bebop is, like, you'll have an episode, if you just speak about the first episode of Cowboy Bebop, the anime, which also almost gets recreated scene by scene, Inside the film. The interesting thing about that is that you see a pregnant woman. Who is who is being a, a, an accomplice to her, to her boyfriend. Who is about to do a crazy crime. And she's about it. She's with it. She is doing this. But the only reason she's doing this is because she, find, she thinks it's her only way to get out of it. And as she, as they go on this crime spree as they try to commit this crime Spike gets in the way of it and Spike almost immediately resembles what she wishes her boyfriend really was and there is a moment inside the show which a sh it's an anime right like it could all be action there's a moment where Spike and the girl just get to speak and they just get to talk. And he is using her because he knows what's going on. But she is into him because she wishes that that was the type of man that she was with. Then we watch her boyfriend recognize that, get jealous, and then a big fight scene happens. And all as the fight scene happens, the girl is looking at Spike then looking at her boyfriend and thinking about the life that and the situation and the circumstances that she's in. That's the complexity of a 22 minute anime and I didn't even get into the details of anything else. That's just one subplot. And Netflix did almost a scene by scene rec recreation of that and did very little, very little to capture any of that. Decided to focus on a million other things and with the with, with with that subplot. And that's sad and that's disappointing. And even though they did a good job in creating a show, I almost feel like you shouldn't be allowed to touch it if you don't really understand what the original show was about. Once again I enjoyed it. I watched the whole thing. Not in a binge, you know, I watched it over a few days. I really did like it. But. I also see it as. 
exactly the issue. What we spoke about on Manic Music Monday and number three, how Hollywood has been able to cash in on our nostalgia. I also think it is an example of that going terribly, terribly wrong. But also doing exactly what it wants to do. And that's the problem. It doesn't care about what the original art was. It cares about making money and being able to keep creating what it wants to create. And if it doesn't get a season two, it doesn't matter because it's just going to redo that to some other show. Now let's give Netflix some props and let's give Kevin Hart some props, right? Because people will shit on Kevin Hart, I think, right? Or does everybody love Kevin Hart? I don't know, actually. I like Kevin Hart, so I'm not like... I'm like really into Kevin Hart. What I'm really into Kevin Hart probably more than anything is how he showcases other comedians, but also like how he talks about the importance of an email list. Like that is something that I live with every day because of Kevin Hart. Um, but I enjoy Kevin Hart. I don't see all of Kevin Hart's films. I've seen a very good amount of them. There's a bunch of great ones that I know that I haven't seen that people are like, when I tell them they ha haven't seen it, like, they're like, damn, you haven't seen that? Like a few ones with The Rock. Right? There's like the cop one. I haven't seen a lot of... Even his dramatic films. I, I know I haven't seen a lot of Kevin Hart films. I've seen all of his stand-up shows, though. They're enjoyable. Um, so, I didn't know about Kevin Hart's Netflix show, True Story. I didn't know it was coming out. I was just... It was Thanksgiving weekend. I was just flipping through the channels. And I go... I see Kevin Hart has this show and i watched the trailer for it and i'm like oh this is extremely interesting look at the the details oh first episode's an hour the rest of the shows are about half an hour 40 minutes perfect quick oh it's a limited series so i know that it's going to have a conclusive ending at the ending great i think i watched the first episode liked it enjoyed it maybe went back and watched Cowboy Bebop and then was like no I'm watching True Story got to the point that you know a few episodes in each episode ends and I'm like oh damn I just need to know how this ends now it wasn't in, in, in the sense where you watch a show um I probably spoke about another show um recently where I did this it'll probably come up we'll see where at the where every episode ends and I go damn what's gonna happen next I need to watch it it's not that type of show it's a type of show where I had an idea of where it was going it did something extremely big but I guess to a, maybe not a trained viewer could be seen as subtle but it did something very big in the first episode that I'm like this has this is for a reason this has to be for a reason let me find out what that reason is so I let watch every episode going all right they didn't get into that in this episode when is that gonna happen when is that gonna come up um so it's a dark loom and there's a tension that never ends and I think that's one of the real successful things that it does is that every moment it just has you sweating and has the, the, the hairs on the back of your neck standing up. You want to figure out, why are you doing this? It's also me watching niggas doing dumb shit that niggas shouldn't be doing. And that is always a, like a, a watch, which is like sad, like, right, right? Like we shouldn't want to see that, but you're rooting for the niggas to not do what you know the dumb, the dumb, you rooting for them not to do the dumb shit that that nigga might do. And going back to what I mentioned, speaking about the foundation, I really enjoyed the ending. It hit the thing that I was curious about, the thing that I wanted to know more information about, it wrapped it all up and it gave me a baseline to move forward with. 
And I don't need a show to answer all of my questions and to wrap everything up. But if telling the better, the best story is giving me some of that and giving me more of that, then damn it, you should. And if that part is interesting, and if that part is going to be... If, if what you can come up with is more interesting than what I can come up with in my mind, then damn it, show it to me. And I think they did that. I think they... Really did that. I watched binge all episodes. Six hours. I was up to 5 a.m. Oh, and on the last episode, I went back. I skimmed back and I was... I'm tired. It's 5 a.m. I'm skimming back and I'm watching parts again. So I'm like, oh, he said that and that and that and that. Oh. Oh, that's what they decided to do. Oh. Oh. So that was all really interesting to me. I give a round of applause to Kevin Hart. I think you did a hell of a good job. I think you killed that. And I think the... So I'm a wrestling fan. You know this. Look at the watch list. There is a lot of hours of wrestling. Damn it, I didn't do it again. There are a lot of hours of wrestling on on this watch list. And one thing that we talk about in the wrestling world is a work. Like, when you take parts of reality and you take parts of the narrative and you twist them and you blend them and you make them so that the audience has no idea what's going on and it feels unpredictable. Now, I don't think Kevin Hart went through anything similar to what True Story is about. But... Because it adds, he adds so much of Kevin Hart into it that in the back of your mind still goes there. Where you're like, oh, what made you write this? Like, what did you go through that was similar to like this? Because this seems like some shit that people in your situation could go through and actually do go through. 